welcome back all you vinyl lovers vinyl fiends my name's Kieran for those of you tuning in for the first time it's been a while since uh, I've been able to get behind the camera as usual uh, bought way too many records and I'm way behind in showing them to you guys but um, actually had some time tonight just chilling alone at home uh, on a Friday night which is rare watching some basketball um, some March Madness um, but I was kind of you know in the mood to make a video so I have the game on um, right there I can still see it um, but yeah thought I would just um, share uh, what uh, is in my new arrival stack here having a uh, little IPA it was only a second video I've made with this background I'm usually behind my uh, with the turntable behind me so this is I have two of these five sing five by ones which is all jazz and then here is kind of my overflow section which has become um, kind of divided up into different categories so I could fit the rest of the stuff but um, so I divided it up uh, I've never really shared how my collection you know jazz A to Z um, soul A to Z rock A to Z um, it's pretty much what I got um, I have like a t few reggae records but what I've done here this is all my Indian navigation right here separated all my strata east about half this all my BYG um, this is all blue note up until this blue note book not all my blue notes some of them are still in there I'm not really as sure with the blue note how to categorize them because like I don't know the really old you know original ones I don't love just having them thrown in with everything else but then once you get into the later 60s and 70s stuff I'd kind of rather have it um, per artist as opposed to by um, by label um, I've separated um, Muse pulled out here this is all Muse this little sec stack is all my Canadian um, jazz on RCI I got uh, this is all hip-hop don't have a ton of hip-hop um, those are all mainstream records like mainstream the jazz label um, what I had to do to make space in my jazz section was take out the biggest artists so this is all Coltrane and Miles Davis here have their own little section um, up here there's a bunch of just like rare records private press um, Nimbus West uh, black jazz so those are the ones I've kind of kept separate uh, small little Brazilian section um, small little world section numeral group uh, blues there's C some CTI and kudu down at the bottom so yeah that's kind of uh, how it goes over there okay just I'm gonna quickly well as quick as I can rip through um, not gonna go into um, you know I never do I usually just show what I got into crazy depth about the record but some classics that I would just been wanting and some kind of stuff more unknown to me and maybe to you guys but um, this was last weekend Pick this up, um, Cannonball Adder Quintet, Cannonball Adder Lee Quintet, um, Country Preacher, um, live at Operation Breadbasket, one of those great uh, 70s Cannonball records um, that I didn't have, um, I'm still missing, you know, there's still a couple that I want, mainly one I think, um, but yeah, I didn't have this and this is like a brand new looking copy as you can see I really hope Villanova doesn't lose this game um, what else this was a Canadian jazz this was I picked up at I picked up a few records at um, 24 hours of vinyl which is an event put on by um, music is my sanctuary Lexus who was actually recently featured on Dustin Groove some of you may know but they've done that event um, different places all over the world um, where they have a different DJ um, set every hour for 24 hours and in the morning they had a, a little record fair and I um, was able to just sneak in and check it out there wasn't much but grabbed a few records I grabbed three or four but 
I was happy to find this one, which I didn't know at all, but more Canadian jazz. Bernie Sineski, Free Spirit, um, on PM Records, a label I have been solely collecting. Um, and this was super cheap, I think it was three bucks. Um, or, I don't know, something around there. But yeah, really happy to um, come across some Canadian jazz that I don't know. And uh, this one is really good, actually. So if you see it, which you probably won't, check it out. Um, this I picked up with the Cannonball Adderley from a dealer here at a little fair that was last weekend. Um, I didn't have this. My goal is beyond on Douglas. This is, well, it's a Canadian pressing, which is on Columbia. This is like classic cheap heat. Um, it was more than, it wasn't a lot. It was still cheap, but kind of wanted to pay $5 for this. But I, um, this is a really, really clean copy. So happy to have that. Um, I dig it a lot with the kind of Indian influence, Indian. Happy to add this to the collection, finally. Um, as our Lawrence bridge into the new age, this is like incredible um, spiritual jazz, if you want to call it. Um, definitely could be something, you know, on um, Strata East. Um, Julian Priester, Hadley Kaliman, Black Arthur, Joe Bonner on piano, John Hurd, Ndugu on drums, Matume, um, Kenneth Nash. Woody Shaw, Gene Karn, Billy Hart. This is on Prestige. Happy to find a copy of that. Well, I bought it online, not gonna lie. This is one I'd seen um, a few people post more cheap heat um, on Pablo. I haven't had a chance to fully listen to this yet, uh, but it definitely sounds um, interesting from what I heard. Um, not what you expect necessarily from a late 70s um, record on Pablo by Dizzy Gillespie, um, Afro-Cuban Jazz Moves. Uh, this is my first uh, Teru Masahino record that I picked up. This was at a little spot I'd never been to. I was in an area of town that I don't go to too often, which is kind of weird because I go all over town, but anyway. And I just googled like record stores in that area and this little used, tiny little store happened to be a block away from me. I was not expecting to find anything, but I found, uh, I bought three records there. This being the least exciting one for me, but not because it's not exciting, but um, I just didn't expect to find anything there. Anyway, this, I really enjoyed this on Enya. Um, my first uh, Kino record. Um, the first track, Alone, 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 14 Minute Jam was my favorite. <clears throat> Adding more black jazz to the collection. Rudolph Johnson, Spring Rain, John Bards, Reggie Johnson, and Ray Pounds. Really, really enjoyed this, actually. Um, I, it was... Uh, I, Weird to say, but I enjoyed it more than I was expecting to. This one, really enjoyed. I don't think I showed this before. Um, I may have. This is Andrew Hill, Nefertiti, on East Wind. And the, I mean, the whole thing's pretty good, but the title track um, is amazing. Oh, well, personally, I love it. And that's the one that's available on YouTube. This is the first record that I pick up on East Wind. This I just picked up last weekend. This is Clifford Jordan Quartet, um, Spellbound. This one's not in the best shape. It sounds great actually, but the, there's some, you know, edge wear, um, not com yeah, some splits, edge wear, cover's not in great shape. The front looks pretty nice, decent, but it's an original mono pressing on Riverside. Um, so, I, you know, I left this there and then the next day I went back to to check something out and um, I grabbed it. I, I felt bad the, the night of after leaving it there. I probably won't come across another copy of this locally. This was a big find for me. Record that I didn't think should be hard to find but I had never come across and it's obviously not super common anymore but um, you know, milestone. Donnie Hammond Gears, so 
not a super rare collectible label, but a very sought after record. Um, you got the ring wear there, but copy's in great shape, so very happy to find this. Mizell Brothers production. Um, I'd never listened to it, actually. I was kind of waiting until I, until I found a copy, and I'm glad I did. Killer jazz funk. And just as good, in my opinion, and one that I had never heard anyone talk about, but my local store had um, online for a while, but it was just crazy expensive for me. And then um, I got them to lower the price um, to a price that I thought was fair. Um, this is Tyrone Washington Do Right on Blue Labor Records from the early 70s. And this is, to me, a jazz funk monster. Um, I really, really recommend this. You check this out. Um, fire. Oof, another record I picked up last week. The same thing. Um, well, same thing as in locally on Discogs um, and got them to give me a bit of a better price. Um, but it had been there because it had been there for a long time. And this is Conflict, Jimmy Wood Sextet, featuring Elvin Jones. And this is one, I mean, I expect it to be good, but I really enjoyed this once I um, put it on the table. Um, Mid-60s, uh, I guess, post-bop, really intense. Um, Elvin Jones is doing his thing on this. Um, Jimmy Woods did not release many records as a leader. Two, three, two, not sure. Um, this is another one I picked up from that 24 hour of the vinyl. Just a record you don't see around here. Um, just classic. Um, 70s uh, soul funk record. Jimmy Castor Bunch samples. This is a um, Spanish pressing of this Freddie Hubbard record, The Artistry of Freddie Hubbard. Um, with, um, so it's from 66, um, so it's not an original U.S. pressing, um, unfortunately, but, uh, I've been wanting this record, you know, I collect, uh, Impulse, not all Impulse, but, you know, titles like these ones I definitely do, so I was happy to get this, and kind of interesting to have a, a Spanish Impulse pressing, you know? have a lot of US originals, Canadian originals, so I have a Spanish one. For the life of me can't figure out the details on pressings for these records. It's not an original, but it's I guess some type of 70s pressings, but I have another record on this label and same thing, it's just not. Um, can't figure it out, so if anyone knows, I mean even on Discogs it's not specifically clear in terms of order of release or anything, but this is um, Roscoe Mitchell, uh, Sextet Sound. Um, love this cover, absolutely love it. And uh, this is, you know, just a 70s pressing of some kind, but can't tell you, not, no, I don't think these are, this is not a first pressing. Um, intense free jazz. This one I definitely need to um, to sit with, haven't had, I put it on, um, when I first got it and then a friend arrived and I didn't think it was appropriate to um, continue listening once he was there so I need to uh, sit with this when the uh, time is right when the girlfriend's not home this was a find like whew, really really enjoy this record it was a discovery for me discovered a new label um, now I've seen there's some other records on this label that I do want and this was just a random um, walk into a record store here that doesn't really have much. I've bought stuff there over the years, but it's they don't have anything new coming in. It's a mostly used books, and they have quite a few records, but the turnover is very slow. Um, and I don't know where this came from, but this is Billy Higgins once more on Red Record, which is an Italian label, and this record is incredible i really really enjoyed this um and this is in great shape so what i did is i just you know got together a bunch of books um that i didn't really need anymore and a couple record a few records and some cds so traded for this and really happy if you see this if you come across it definitely recommend um this billy higgins record from i want to say early 80s it might be late like 79 or early 80s um, 
doesn't say on here. This one, I mean, I didn't expect it to blow me away. It was, it was, I enjoyed it, but you know, not like wow, but because of the label, for now I'm collecting them. I don't think I'll ever have all of them, and who knows, maybe one day I'll sell them. But like this cover too, I love the, the BYG format. Um, so this is Anthony Braxton. Anthony Braxton doing An Anthony Braxton things, but this one's not like too heavy, um, too crazy actually. My cousin, who I lived with for four years um, in university, is the biggest Sam Cooke fan known to man, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Um, so I inherited some of that. Um, I enjoy his music. Um, I really like his gospel stuff. Um, and then this is one of the albums that I really enjoy, and this I came across this original um, Canadian pressing, which, you know, this is not a, a common record at all. Um, well, not these days anyways. This is Nightbeat and um, very different than the rest of the stuff I'm showing, but I really, really enjoy this, this um, Sam Cooke record. This I have not yet listened to. It's one that I said I would pick up the next time I saw it for cheap and it was two or three dollars. And this is an Alice Coltrane, uh, Alice Coltrane with Carlos Santana, Illuminations. So, I don't know why, I guess because of the label or why it's so cheap on Columbia with Santana, but um, it sounded like there was some, you know, good stuff on here, but it's Alice Coltrane from the 70s, so can't really go wrong, especially for like two bucks. Um, another Black Jazz, so I haven't got a new Strata East record in a long time. I don't remember the last time I got one, but it's been six months. I don't think since the summer that I've gotten a new Strata East record and for a while before that I was picking up quite a few Strata East records online and even finding some locally um, but I've kind of hit a wall mostly because they're really really pricey and um, they're not popping up locally not that they do ever often but now I wasn't I had no black jazz for the longest time and now I'm kind of slowly filling in the black jazz catalog which is I think half, I think it's even less than half of uh, what the Strata East one is, but um, slowly filling these. Um, this one's good. This was from my man Tom. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, but still a lot of the big ones to go. I think my favorite is still the awake, the two Awakening ones. Oh, Villanova struggling down by six in the second half. This is one of the ones I found in, um, in that random shop where I didn't expect to find anything, which was a, also a bookstore. Um, Archie Shep, Fire Music, original US press, um, mono pressing. So I have a lot of Archie Shep records. I don't know how many, but probably 20, close to that. Um, there's still a few of those 60s Archie Shep on Impulse that I don't have. Another BYG, um, AACM, Reese and the Smooth Ones, number 29. Another one um, that I need to sit with a bit more, but I listened to it through once and enjoyed it. This I really enjoyed it. Also from Tom, wasn't sure. I almost didn't grab it. Out, he was selling me two records and then this was the third and I actually out of the three the the um, Chester Thompson this one and the other one they sold me which I'll show you this is my favorite um, this is Billy Bang sextet featuring Frank Lowe sweet space this is dope thank you Tom what's the I don't remember what my favorite song is I don't remember which one it is. Oh, record ended. That was uh, Horace Tapscott, The Call, that was uh, playing in the background. Another one I had seen, um, you know, a couple times when I was first getting more into free jazz, 
And uh, then I was rewatching, I think, one of uh, Van Seco Funk's videos, and he showed this, and I said that the next time I saw it, I would pick it up, and I saw it again for cheap. And I enjoyed it, actually. Um, I need to listen to it again, obviously, because someday I'm going to stop buying records and re-listen to all these records many more times than I've listened to them. But this is Henry Threadgill, X75, Volume 1. Another dope cover um, on Arista Novus. This is the other one I picked up from Tom, one I'd wanted for a while. I need to listen to this again in the sense that I... It didn't like capture me as much as I was, I was as I was expecting it to, based on um, other people's descriptions and the way it had been hyped. Not to say it wasn't good. Um, there's also a bit of surface noise on it, um, which kind of distracts a little bit from the listening. And somehow, having never seen this record um, since I've got it from you, Tom, I've come across two other copies, which I didn't buy, but was, thought that was funny. It's the way things go. But another impulse want um, added to the collection, um, you know, Don Cherry, Carla Blay, um, Gatto Barbieri, I think, um, just going off memory, but there's a whole slew of great musicians on here. This was recommended to me by John Ra, who doesn't make videos anymore, unfortunately, and sold to me by um, someone else. Andrew Gordon, Champ Sound, so two of my favorite video makers um, who don't make videos anymore, unfortunately. Um, but I owe this to them, both of them, in some sort of way. Guitar Interlude, Joe Pass. Um, this is on Discovery Records, so this, I think, did I show this? I don't know, maybe. Because I also picked up um, the Pancho Sanchez on Discovery. Um, but very, very good record. This is actually a, a second pressing. Of this record but uh, Andrew came up on some dead stock he was selling it so I went for it oh, tie game this was a probably the best three dollars I could have spent um, Barquet's Black Rock on Volt killer cover took I was just like sound can't be not good um, and it surpassed my expectations of what I was getting myself into there. This is the other one I got with the Archie Shep and the um, Kino at that random spot. Um, this is a Canadian pressing on uh, Embryo. But uh, lineup on this killer. Joe Henderson, John McLaughlin, Herbie Hancock, Jack DeJanette, and on one song, Joe Chambers on drums. Dope record. And last but certainly not least, um, Jimmy Smith, Root Down, seen a bunch of people posting this and uh, grabbed myself a copy locally here. Um, Canadian, original Canadian pressing on Verve. It's pretty much identical to the US press. Um, so Jimmy Smith in the early 70s doing his thing. Funky, bluesy. Um, it's a nasty record. It's good. So yeah, that is it. Or not grab this today this I listen to um, on iTunes music in the car and it blew me away this is one of the best my favorite Sun Ra records so I had to get a copy um, on vinyl this is Sleeping Beauty never gonna have an original of this um, so yeah I just listened to this um, springtime again three tracks springtime again door of the cosmos and the tra title track Sleeping Beauty this is um, incredible very to me spiritual jazz but it's also funky it's like it's very accessible sun Ra in the vein of languidity in terms not like crazy out there um so that's definitely a good um sun Ra starting point um and then this i grabbed today too as the japanese pressing missing the obi um very um generously priced i don't know if that would be the right word but um super cheap japanese pressing in perfect shape of this killer Grant Green record from 1965 on Verve Records with Candido, Ben Dixon, Harold Vick, and Larry Young on organ. Um, so that's most of what I've picked up recently. There's a few others lying around, but this is 25 minutes long. I'm gonna go enjoy the last uh, 10 minutes of this basketball game. Oh, Nova up by five now, nice. Cheers guys, peace.